Hi there, thanks for tuning in. This is a continuation of the previous video which talks about how you can set up your Mystic Bulletin Board system and post public messages called Echo Mail which can be shared amongst other Bulletin Board systems across the internet. And today we're also working on figuring out how to get those messages out of our Bulletin Board. Now you might recall when we finished before we were looking at a, um, a main menu screen such as this and if I go M into the message menu, recall last time I talked about message groups and message areas. And if we go J for join group, we created one group called FSX Net. And if I press A for areas, there are three message bases, which are called general messages, test messages, and general chat. Now, two of those message bases are local bases and if you post messages to them they are never going to go anywhere further than your bulletin board but the other base that we set up in the previous video was a echo mail base which could be exported. What it's occurred to me though is that um, it's a little confusing and quite easy to uh, post the wrong message base at the moment because we've only got one group which we just called FSXNet. So what I'm going to do before we go any further is go back into the configuration settings and just make some changes. I'll go into the editors and go into the message base group and I'm going to press the forward slash key and insert a new group and this group I'm going to call local. Group 2 is local, group 1 uh, uh, is uh, FSXNet. Then I'm going to go into the message base editor and the general messages and test messages, I'm going to just apply some um, access settings to these. So I'm going to say you need to be a security level of 20 and be part of group 2 to list it. Security level of 20 group 2. Actually I might even make this security level 10 because in this case you don't even need to be uh, validated. But if you wanted to post to it it's up to you, but in this case I'll be generous and say group 2, security level 10, and the system operator um, access at uh, S255 group 2. Note that the base type is local. I'm going to do the same for this one as well, because this is another local base, so S10G2, 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 oops, can't type, G2 and S255G2, another local base. And then this one we already know is part of group 1. Now if I just escape out to this setting here and go, let's hide that for a second and go back and have a look in the bulletin board, I might just go back to the main menu and back into the message menu. Now if I press J to join a group, this is making more sense. I've got two local groups, oh, sorry, two, one local group with two message areas in it and then I've got one for FSX Net which has got one area in it. So let's choose FSX Net because that's which, what we're working on and if I press A to change area I've really only got one choice which is already set there. Um, I am going to write a new message now just to be on the safe side. We'll send it to all. Testing one two three this is a test from Thor BBS. Hi. And then I use the forward slash key to bring up a command menu. Remember you can use the question mark if you want to choose what to do with it. And I'm going to save the message. This is all good. But how do I get that message out? And that's now what we're going to talk about. Let me introduce to you a program that is a bit like the Swiss Army knife of um, utilities for Mystic Bulletin Board. It's called Mutil, M-U-T-I-L. And if you run that on its own from the Mystic directory, you'll see this screen pop up. And obviously things haven't worked out too well because there's a fatal error and it's showing um, load configuration, no process configured. So Mutil needs a configuration file, usually with the .ini extension. And if we have a look in the Mystic directory, you'll see that apart from the executable there, there is another file by the same name, which is the configuration file. 
I use a text editor called Notepad++. I think it's really good. You can do a lot of cool things with this, but it just makes viewing text files easy. And in here you can see there's a lot of text. Um, there's some uh, comments which are all prefaced by these uh, semicolons. And particularly what this does is it configures the Mutil program to run particular functions. And we're going to be focused on these two, how to export and import into the bulletin board Echo Mail and NetMail. At the start of this configuration file is a general stanza which allows you to turn on and off the various functions that you want to perform. So here they're all set to false. In the case of exporting, getting the message out, we want to change this one, this export echo mail from a false to a true. We also um, set some logging details. So to start with the configuration is log, uh, mutil.log. And that's uh, fine, just go with that. But I suggest you set the uh, logging level to the greatest level you can, level 3, because it gives you more information. And then you can choose the kind of way that the logging occurs. And I choose usually roll by number of days. So roll the, the logs for so many days. Give me 31 days worth of logs and make the file size 1,500 kilobytes. Next up is a whole bunch of different stanzas that relate to these functions up here. And what we want to do is find the stanza called Export Echo Mail, which if you scroll down through this list of stuff, sooner or later we will find... Gosh, it's a lot, isn't it? Here it is here, Export Echo Mail. And you can see it's not much to this particular one. There's just one switch which allows us to configure whether or not to export messages from users that are currently logged into the bulletin board. And at the moment that's set to, the skip process is set to true. In other words, it wouldn't export anything if somebody who was logged into your system um, posted a message. It would wait until after they'd got off. Now, my top tip for you for this video is don't set everything up in the one configuration file. It's a big file as it is, and it can get really confusing. Instead, what I suggest you do is you just save the bits you need for the functions that you want to run and call them by that name. So it's a bit like a cooking show where you can um, hear something I prepared earlier and if I just copy and paste in a file which I've called mailout.ini and let's open up the uh, text editor and have a look at this one. So you'll see at the beginning I've got all of the, the gumph that uh, was at the start explaining what happens. But very quickly you can see things have changed. And what I've done is I've paired it right back. I've just got the one function that I want to run called Echo Mail, and that's set to true. I've got the logging information, which is part and parcel of the general stanza. And then down the bottom I've got rid of absolutely everything else except for the function or the stanza that relates to this uh, function. And the setting I've actually changed from true to false because my view is it's really good to get messages out and away as quickly as you can. Uh, that's how I like to run the system I use. So I've set that to false and that just along with some other settings I'll show you in a different video speeds up getting messages out of your bulletin board. So now in the mystic directory I've got a mailout.ini and if I go back to the screen here and I run mutil mail out and you don't have to put the any that actually isn't necessary let's see what happens and now you can see that it's run a process called exporting echo mail and as part of that process it's exported one echo mail message no net mail and nothing's been skipped net mail I'm going to explain to you in another video but for now we know something's actually happening and I also advocate that you go into the logs folder and look for the mutil file and let's just open that up and see what it did. So here's the most recent process and you can see there's quite a bit of extra text because we've set the logging level to level 3. But the key thing is it's exporting echo mail, it's exporting a message number 2 because it was the second one that I was testing in this video and it's um, sending it to the echo node link that we set up 211100 that's the hub system and then it's run um, pkzip and it's taken the file which is a raw packet file and in a, in a uh, temporary directory it's compressed it and it's stuck it into 
uh, echo mail slash out fido net and then there's the um, compressed file name so that's a zipped up version of this packet file so that mess that f message so to speak is just about ready to be sent away and uh, we'll take a look at that in the directories as well so we've got an echo mail out fido net and in here you'll see we've got two files one is the compressed packet that's about to be sent away and the second one is a text file which I'll just open up and show you and inside all it's doing is it's pointing to that particular file um, that we are going to send away but the important thing about this file other than pointing to the actual message that's going is the extension that's used so it's got a .clo extension and what that means is for the software that we now use to send the message away it recognizes that this is a priority message it's a what's known as a crash message send it as straight as, as soon as you can so we're at the point now where we've got something good to go but how do we actually send it I hear you ask so in the mystic directory another one of the executable files that we can run is called Fidopol and let me introduce you now to Fidopol Fidopol if you just type the words in and hit enter actually comes up with a bit of description this program will send and retrieve echo mail packets for configured echo mail nodes using any of the Bink P, FTP or directory based transmission systems we're using Bink P which is kind of like um, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a dedicated protocol for sending these kinds of messages over the internet. And if you want to, remember how we configured in the Mystic configuration settings back here, configuration echo mail node, and this is what we're about to send to, all of this stuff, and there it is there, session type bink p. What we can do is we can use um, Fidopol and we can simply just check that and say Fidopol list and it's now saying we've got one active echo mail link to the FSXNet hub and it's a bink type system that we're connecting to and there's its address. You can also see in the messages above or the prompts above we've got some options to send and if, if we um, invoke Fidopol send it's going to send to uh, nodes anything that has new outbound messages destined for them or we can say Fidopol forced in which case it would poll every echo node that we configured up whether it had messages waiting or not that's a bit of a blunt force instrument or we could simply go Fidopol address so we could type Fidopol um, 211100 and off it would go. Now I'm not going to run this particular process because I think um, at the moment I know that it's not going to work for me and the only reason for that is because I'm hosting the hub and uh, instead of polling a domain name I'd need to poll an internal IP address. So what I'm going to do is quickly pause the video, make a quick change behind the scenes and then run this so you can see how it actually does work. And we're back thanks to the magic of video and TV and anything else that you'd like to, to uh, apportion it to. Now, hopefully I've made the configuration changes I needed just to be able to make sure that the, the demo worked for you. So let's give it a go. If I press enter on this, we'll see what happens. Oh, look at that. Things are definitely happening. Now what you see happening there is that I've connected to um, a local IP address just so that I can do this demonstration and at the same time as sending the message to the hub you'll also see that the hub is um, a bunch of stuff ready for this um, system to uh, import and so as a result we've received a number of packets and we've also received a few files from FSXNet which include um, an information pack and what's known as a node list file. So this is cool stuff. Let me just show you where that's landed in. And in the uh, directory structure, remember we have echo mail. So the out was where the stuff uh, left and clearly the in is where all the packets and information are sitting. 
for the purposes of this video, just to start with, I'm going to create a temporary directory here. And I'm only doing that just so that I, when I do import some stuff, I'm not importing everything at once because we're going to treat importing files differently to importing messages. So I'm putting the files in the temp directory for now. And that leaves us with a whole bunch of packets here that are compressed and ready to go. And I can show you the packets inside. So if I just um, use the unzip program 7-zip and we open the archive up, let me just show you inside. See, lots and lots of message packets waiting for us from uh, some time ago. So how do we get the packets in? I hear you say. I think at this stage I'm going to stop the recorder and we'll make that the subject of part three of this video. But thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to keep up with top tips. And of course, as always, um, keep an eye on uh, this Mystic Guy channel for further updates.